Perhaps you're familiar with the fierce muscle car battles of the 1960s, but have you heard about the muscle bike rivalries? Probably not. That's because there wasn't a proper muscle bike in existence at that time, that is until 1985 when Yamaha came out with this monster. Indeed, the 1980s in America marked a significant era with its mix of achievements and challenges. It was a time of abundance and innovation, giving rise to remarkable creations in both the automotive and motorcycling sector. Among these, one standout was the Yamaha VMAX. Back in 1985, the VMAX made its debut to widespread acclaim, earning the prestigious Bike of the Year title from Cycle World magazine in its inaugural year. The recipe was straightforward, bold design, a powerful engine, comfortable cruising, and enduring reliability. What Yamaha intended with the VMAX was to create more of a macho image among American enthusiasts and thereby attract more customers to their brand, away from the market leader Harley Davidson. For that to happen, the VMAX had to excel, and excel it did. It even pioneered a whole new class of motorcycles in the process, the muscle bike class, more aptly known as power cruisers. The VMAX, unlike many other motorcycles in Yamaha's lineup, was primarily targeted for the United States market from the start. Initially, Yamaha had no intention of introducing this bike to other markets, although this decision would later change. The design of the VMAX was tailored to appeal to the distinctive American aesthetic and the country's fascination with acceleration. Yamaha's aim was to tap into the large cruiser market dominated by brands like Harley-Davidson. Recognizing the need for both bold styling and exceptional performance, Yamaha crafted a bike that would stand out. Akira Araki, the leader of VMAX development, undertook the task of crafting a design that would capture attention and ignite excitement. In 1983, Araki and a select team from Yamaha commenced the bike's design journey at GKDI Design Company in Santa Monica, California. Their objective was clear, to integrate a powerful engine into a robust frame and envelop it in the appeal of Detroit-style, muscle car-inspired aesthetics. The distinct scoops adorning the sides of the VMAX unmistakably echo the influence of 1960s muscle cars. Styling elements of the classic VMAX include its substantial 62-inch wheelbase and imposing rear tire, which, at the time, was the largest ever fitted to a motorcycle, measuring 150 by 95 series. Initially, Yamaha's reception to the VMAX was lukewarm, as it diverged from the typical Japanese motorcycle archetype. However, Araki and the engineering team remained steadfast in their belief that the bike would earn acclaim and achieve legendary status. Through diligent market research and direct engagement with riders, it became evident that Araki's vision was spot on, Americans eagerly anticipated the arrival of this remarkable machine. The bold and menacing appearance of this muscle car inspired bike immediately suggests its incredible speed, and indeed, that assumption proved to be true. The VMAX's engine originates from Yamaha's Venture Touring bike but has been enhanced for its role in this new muscle cruiser. Yamaha, renowned for its excellent motorcycle engines, had already mastered the V4 format. While Honda pioneered this format, Yamaha's expertise in it was evident. With a displacement of 1200cc, featuring double overhead cams, four valves per cylinder, and liquid cooling, the Venture engine was among the most powerful of its time, boasting 90 horsepower. However, for a machine dubbed a muscle cruiser, this power was deemed insufficient. Araki and his team embarked on modifying the 1200cc power plant, beginning with upgrades to the intake and exhaust valves, the four carburetors, the camshaft, and other internal engine components. The five-speed, wet-clutch transmission was also reinforced to accommodate the increased power. Although turbocharging the VMAX was considered due to its popularity at the time, Araki and his team opted for a highly effective system that prioritized enhanced breathing to achieve optimal performance. Yamaha engineers devised an innovative approach for enhancing power in the VMAX without resorting to forced induction methods. Instead of relying on traditional supercharging, they developed a sophisticated system utilizing servo-operated butterfly valves. The engineers named the system as V-Boost. Operating akin to a carburetor-driven supercharger, the V-Boost system employed two servo-operated valves linked to the engine's ignition. Positioned between the two cylinder banks, these valves opened gradually as engine speed increased, reaching full aperture at 8,000 rpm. This action facilitated the simultaneous introduction of the air-fuel mixture from all four carburetors into the engine, resulting in a single, more potent combustion event. 
Importantly, because of the differing piston strokes, power loss was minimized. The power supply was automatically cut off at 9000 RPM. The outcome of this engineering ingenuity. A claimed 145 horsepower at 9000 RPM and 112 newton meters of torque at 7500 RPM, all within a remarkably lightweight package tipping the scales at just 631 pounds when wet or 286 kilograms. These figures were unimaginable for many people at that time. Interestingly, Yamaha opted for a shaft-driven power delivery system instead of the more conventional chain or a belt drive, a decision that set the VMAX apart from its contemporaries. The VMAX prioritized more than just raw power. Its adjustable 40mm KR-bar fork and KR-bar twin rear shocks provided exceptional agility, albeit with some choppy feedback especially on uneven road surfaces. While there were superior long-distance cruisers available, none matched the speed of the VMAX. The VMAX employed two-piston calipers for braking on both the front and rear wheels. Riders at the time often noted the braking system's exceptional power. But it had a tendency to cause the front end to dive excessively and the rear end to become unstable under hard braking. However, this characteristic didn't deter enthusiasts, rather, it was perceived as part of the bike's personality. The VMAX clocked a quarter-mile time of just 10.89 seconds, primarily limited by the traction of its sizable rear tire. Its top speed approached nearly 150 miles per hour, or 240 kilometers per hour. Again, insane numbers for a cruiser even today. These figures shows how ahead of time the VMAX was in terms of performance. The VMAX boasted power across all ranges of its power band, low, mid, and high, earning its reputation as an unstoppable force on the road. Yamaha's VMAX remained virtually unchanged for an astonishing 22 years, a testament to its exceptional design and engine performance. However, in 2009, Yamaha reintroduced the VMAX with a completely redesigned look that retained its trademark attitude. Simply saying it was even more unhinged. This revamped version featured a new V4 engine now displacing a capacity of 1,679 cubic centimeters making 197 horsepower at 9,000 rpm and 166 newton meters of torque at 7,500 rpm. You had all that power at your disposal without any electronic nannies except for ABS. In short, you need to have balls of steel to fully exploit the performance on offer. Other than the engine it featured a new modern chassis, an electroluminescent instrument display, Yamaha chip-controlled intake, YCCI, fully adjustable suspension, anti-lock brakes, a slipper clutch, a relocated fuel tank beneath the seat, and a unique key set. Unfortunately, this new VMAX didn't have the lifespan of the original one. In 2020 Yamaha discontinued the VMAX. According to Yamaha, the European emission standards made it too difficult and expensive to re-engineer the VMAX to obtain compliance. And it does not seem that Yamaha will revive this model anytime soon. So, what do you guys think? Leave your thoughts in the comment section below. And as always if you guys enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up, or if you loved it, please consider subscribing to the channel. See you guys next time, ride safe.